Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Verse 6, according to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhor exhortation. Giving, with generosity. Leading, with diligence. Showing mercy, with cheerfulness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we have also learned through this scripture, Father, that you have given each of us individual gifts for the building of the kingdom. Let us always remember that these gifts are given by you, empowered by the Holy Spirit for your purpose, Father, sometimes for a lifetime, sometimes for a season, Father, but it is all for you to glorify your kingdom, Father, and let us realize that we are not here for ourselves, but we are here to serve others and to glorify your name, Father. So right now, we're going to lift up our hands, lift up our hearts, lift up our thoughts, Father, clear our minds of all the junk of the week, Father, and just give you praise and glory because you are good, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for everything you've done this week, Father. No matter what the trials are, we just want to give you thanks, Father. We just want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your air, the, the beat of our hearts, Father, just being able to just recognize that you are Lord, Father. You are the creator and, and that there is nothing beyond you, Father. And Father, we're just going to take your word and we're going to live by your word, Father. We're going to breathe your word. We're going to serve you, Father, through your word, Father. We're just going to glorify you through your word, Father. And we're just going to open our ears for the word you have from the man of God today. So, Father, we just want to give you thanks and praise and lift up your holy name and let the church say amen, amen, and one more time, unamaste, amen. Father, we thank you, praise you, and magnify you on this morning. There is none like you, God. Father, we searched all over and we could not find any like you, Lord, Father. You're both Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God, it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. God, we're thankful for this day, God, Father. It's the day that you've made, and we get to rejoice and be glad in it, God. We lift our voices to you this morning, God, our hearts and our minds. Father, I pray this morning, God, Father, that you would speak through me. But it is, God, we are to learn, hear, and do. Let your word be clear, God. Help us in every way, shape, and form, we pray. In Jesus' name, and the people of God say amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. And if you have your Bibles, if you can grab Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. We were there last week. We had an abbreviated portion of this sermon, so we wanted to come back this week, amen, and grab the rest of the sermon, pick up. We've been talking about the gifts of God, of the Holy Spirit, as good gifts given by the Holy Spirit to the church. We've been kind of speed reading through the text, and we want to take a few moments today, amen, and just kind of look at the text this morning and pull ourselves off into it. Will you stand for the reading of God's word, please?
at Romans 12, verse 3. It reads this way. It says, For the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individual members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it in proportion to one's faith. If service, use it in service and teaching. If teaching and teaching, if exhorting and exhortation, giving with generosity, leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. We've been these several weeks working through, last few weeks, just what it means to be a gifted church. What does it mean to be a gifted church? And we've been, we've been on a journey to discover not only what it means to be a gifted church, but what does it mean to have gifts individually and how does those gifts interconnect collectively for the good of all. This morning, before we jump in, I just wanted to take a few minutes and recap what God has shown us through the scriptures concerning the gifts of the Holy Spirit. First and foremost, the gifts are God-given. They're, 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 they are not learned or earned. They're God-given. You may recall in Acts chapter 8, around verses 18 through 20, there was a magician, a sorcerer by the name of Simon. And when he saw how God was working through the apostles, he bid them and begged them that if he gave them money, that they would lay hands on him so that he then can have the gifts that they had and use it. And the Bible tells us that he was openly rebuked and put to shame because he thought that he could buy the gifts of God, a man with money. I don't know which is worth in the modern time, people who think they can buy the gifts or those who think they can sell the gifts. Gifts are for the glory of God. Amen. They, they, they are so that God can be glorified in all that happens. Amen. I know you want to leave church on Sunday and say, we sure had church. The Spirit show moved today. Amen. God showed up. But, 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 but the reality of it is, is that the glory of God is always present. Whether the preacher is dry or high, the glory of God is still present. I know how it is, amen. If you don't have your emotional experience sometime, amen, you feel like that you gave up your pillow for almost nothing. Because, amen, sometimes you got to argue between, amen, getting out the bed and coming to church or, or just hanging out there for a little while. Trust me, this morning I had the same attitude. I was sitting on my back porch, drinking my, my, my cup of coffee, reading my scriptures, looking at the birds fly around when my wife knocked on the window and said, get yourself together and get up out of here. Amen. My wife sends me to church like parents send their kids to school. I don't care how you feel, buddy, but you got to leave here today. <laughs> Gifts are for the common good. Amen. They're for the common good. In other words, amen, uh, 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 gifts are supposed to benefit the whole body. They're not, they're, they're, they're not supposed to be uh, 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 just, gifts are not like your savings account if you're stingy. You know, you save money, amen, because this is what I'm going to have later on. Amen. This, this is for me. I, I, I asked one of my sons the other day, I said, hey, won't you drop off uh, on your pops a C note? He says, I ain't got it. I said, I know you got it. He says, no, 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 it's not in the budget. I say, okay, I can respect that. I can respect that. I respect. But, but, but the next time you write the budget, write me in. <laughs> write me in. Through different faith traditions, and even some of us in this room have, have, have different functions, forms, and flows of the gift, they shouldn't divide us. Gifts should not be like our political positions. We shouldn't be divided by our gifts. Gifts shouldn't be like the coronavirus was, mask on, mask off. Get a shot, don't get a shot. Amen. Give, give, gifts should not have us not speaking to each other. In fact, let me just be honest with you, amen. Here, here, here's the reality of it. Your politics shouldn't have you not speaking to each other. Because one day we're all going to be in the kingdom together forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And it won't matter if you're for a donkey or an elephant. Amen. It's going to all be about the lamb. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In other words, we should be both godly and charitable towards each other. You may speak in tongues. 
and I may not. Amen. You may have a word of prophecy. Amen. And I can barely figure out where the words in the scripture are at, scriptures are at. But, but that should not divide us. Amen. It should not divide the church because at the end of the day, all those who profess Jesus Christ are God's beloved children, regardless if you are a continuationist, meaning I believe the gifts continued into the kingdom comes, or you a cessationist, meaning, amen, that I think all the gifts have stopped with the death of the last apostle and our prophet. Just saying. Augustine helps us out when he wrote, in essentials, we have unity. And non-essentials, we have liberty. In all things, we have charity. That word charity sometimes is translated love. A spiritual gift is a God-given, empowered ability to serve God and others in ways that benefit the church and others and for the glory of God alone. If God, and he has, let me just don't use the word if, God has blessed all of us with gifts, amen, so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Every born-again believer is endowed with at least two gifts. We talked about this, salvation, the gift of salvation, right? And there's a gift that God has given you for the edification of the rest of the body. Ephesians 2 remind us, for by grace you've been saved, right? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Uh, Romans, tw- uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6 reminds us that, that, that we have different, different gifts, but the same spirit, different ministries, but the same Lord, different activities, but the same uh, God works in all of them throughout. So, so here it is, uh, different gifts, same spirit, same Lord, same God. Your gift does not elevate you, or nor does it give you some type of different access Amen. So, so, so he, he lets us know different ministries. In other words, we all not going to be doing the same thing. But the same Lord, same God, different, di- different activities, but the same spirit, same God. And, and, and though we have this diversity, we, we've discovered that we have unity. That's why he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 14, indeed, the body is not one, but many. He tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, that we should earnestly desire gifts. And then he said, especially that you might prophesy. That word prophesy, I'm going to deal with it a little bit later. Amen. But here in this particular text, amen, he is saying that you might proclaim the gospel. I know how we are when we hear the word prophecy. Some of us get skirmish because we've had bad, uh, we, we, we've had bad encounters, uh, with wolves and false prophets, and so we don't, when we hear that word prophecy, amen, we just shut down. But, 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 but we're going we to unpack some of that at the end of the sermon today. So let us look again and jump into the text. Look with me again at, at, at these scriptures. He says, for by grace uh, given to me, I tell every one among you not to think more highly of himself uh, as he ought to think, instead to think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, here's what you got to remember. The Apostle Paul, right, in, 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 in chapters 1 through 11 has laid out what we call doctrinal foundation of the church. He's, he's told us how we are, uh, 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 what we are to believe in those first chapters. That's why, like Romans 1 says, uh, um, he, talk, he, he, he talks about how, how salvation comes. And so, and so, and so he, 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 he tells us, he tells us there. And so he lets us know. And then, and then all the way through those, and then when he gets to chapter 12, he kind of pivots a little bit. And he then tells us how we ought to behave. He says, he says, because of what you know, right, you ought to grow and behave differently. In other words... You shouldn't sit in church for all your life and still don't know nothing. You still shouldn't be clowning after 20 years of sitting under God's word. Don't mean you won't be sinning. But there ought to be some Holy Ghost conviction when you sin. You ought to run to the altar in your house, at church, wherever it is. In other words, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. You ought to be growing up. And some of y'all ought to be grown and old by now. Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 12, tells us that. In other words, we shouldn't be still on milk after being in the body for a long period of time. So, 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 so Romans 1 through 11 tells us, amen, about, the, uh, about how we should, what we should believe, amen. 
Amen. And then when you, get, when, when you get to verse 12, he begins to transition. He says, this is how you ought to behave because of what you believe. And so we, we, we pick up our text here. We know this because we are encouraged to present our whole bodies in Romans 12, 1 as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. Right. We, 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 we are encouraged not only to strive to have ourselves together, but also to be contributing to the greater body and humility and holiness. We could argue that Paul is demonstrating for us how God has given gifts first and foremost in the the mere fact of apostleship to to the apostle Paul. But then we can clearly see how these gifts of teaching, exhortation, leadership, wisdom, and prophecy in the life of Paul, uh, 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 along with his other gifts, brought graceful humility. So why lay this out? If the great apostle Paul, the great apostle of the church, right, can think and act soberly concerning the gifts, so can you and I. We look at a couple of gifts last week, and then we're going to pick up some as we dive in a little bit more here. And so catch again with me verse 3. Look what Paul says. He says, For by the grace given to me, I tell every one of you uh, not to think more highly of himself than he should, instead to think sensibly as God has given uh, 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 has God has dis- distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, here it is. Point one. Here's my first point. We all have a measure of faith. You're sitting here by faith this morning. Mm-hmm. We all have a measure of faith, right? All right. And so we must ask, what is the measure of faith? A measure of faith here means that God has given different amount of faith to be used at different times in varying situations. A measure of faith came from the Greek word metron, which we get the word meter from, and it means a standard measurement. Paul is saying that God has given all of us a standard measurement of faith. That faith is not purchased or stored up since its origins are in the finished work of Christ. In other words, amen, you, amen this, ain't like, this ain't like your center point energy bill. Well, you got to pay something for it. Yeah. No, no. He said, God, 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 God's not like, uh, what, what's, what's that place? Ecock, Fcock, what's that place? Be t- I, I just got some, I got some stuff from them this week, amen. Would they be shutting off the grid, this, that, the other? God says, no. God says, listen, God says, I got, I got all the faith you need, and I'm going to deposit it into you as you need it. Yeah. So, so, so here's what that means. None of us are lacking faith. Yeah. We may be lacking trust, but we don't lack faith, Amen. Amen. Because God says, I got you. I, 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 I'm covering you. In other words, anything that you and I do is only going to be, amen, because God has equipped us and given us a measure of faith and, and propelled us to do it. Because the truth be told, none of us would do anything except God, amen, by his spirit indwelling inside of us is pushing us to do it. See, and this is why we shouldn't go off on the deep end concerning gifts. Uh, They start and end with the sufficient grace of God towards us. And when you and I understand this, there is no need for grandizing or false spiritual elevation. You can simply trust that God has the best for you and for the family of faith. uh, In in other words, and then he says, in all humility. I told you this story before. There was a guy in the army. He had went from, uh, he was a major and he went to colonel. And uh, now now after you make colonel, the next step is for you to become general. But he had made colonel. And and, and, And he was thinking pretty highly of himself. He was in what they call the commander's quarters, if you would. He was in the command center. And he kept looking in the mirror and he says, I'm a colonel now, amen. I'm a colonel now. And he would practice salute. He saluted himself. And so as he was getting his new office arranged, right, there was a knock on the door. It was this young private, Private Johnson. And Johnson knocked on the door, and the colonel said, hold up, hold up, before you come in. Just wait one minute, private. And he grabbed the phone, and he began to talk on the phone, and he said, yes, Mr. President, yes, Mr. President, yes, Mr. President, yes, Mr. President. And then he hung up the phone, and then he says, come on in, Johnson. And the private walked in, and the private had, had, all, had, had a whole bell of wire, and, and he says, what do you need, Johnson? He says, sir, I'm here to up your phone. I know that's hard for some of y'all because y'all don't remember. There was a time when we had to, we had to run lines in the places, amen. There was, a, there was a time when speed dial was how fast your fingers could move, amen, on a rotary dial. I know some of y'all don't know nothing about that, amen. They don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that, amen. My nieces was in the car with my brother-in-law, and he has an old truck. 
And I guess they had rode in the truck with him, amen, when he bought it. And they hopped in the truck, and uh, he told them to roll the windows down. And they was looking on the arm. And they kept looking on the arm. They was rubbing the arm. They was pressing the door. He says, no, that knob right there, just roll the window on down right there. Amen. They say, take us back home. You didn't put us in this old jalopy. See, see, see. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We can be so high-minded, we're no earthly good. And, and, and here's the deal about God. Whenever you elevate yourself, the Bible says God will pull you back down to earth. So what are you saying? What are you saying, Pastor? Regardless of how God has shaped you, wired you, gifts, talents, abilities, whatever you want to call them, there is never a need to impress. Amen. Amen. God has given you enough to carry you as far as he wants to carry you. Now, here's my next point. He then says... He then tells us how the gifts work. He says, we make up one body of gifted people. We make up one body of gifted people. A few weeks ago, I told you how I love our church because we, though, though we're not a large church, amen, we are diverse as all get out. And I love it, amen. We got people from all walks of life. We got people with GEDs and PhDs. We got black people and white people and Hispanic people, amen. We got some Jamaicans and Africans and Syrians, and I love it, right? I love it. And so, and so, but, 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 but what, but, but that reminds me of is that, is that when I look in this room, especially when all the babies are up, I see a picture of heaven. There will not be a man, a black neighborhood, a white neighborhood, an Hispanic neighborhood in heaven. There will not be a middle class or projects in heaven. Cause y'all all know what they say at funerals, don't y'all? Amen. That God has given them a mansion up in heaven. Amen. <laughs> You know, that's, that's our verse for funerals, amen. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled, amen. Believe in the Lord, believe also in me, that in my Father's house are many, are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you so. That's that comforting verse that we get, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He lived under the bridge, but in heaven he has a mansion. Now, I ain't got no harm. I ain't got no problem. But, I, but, 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 but God can hook a brother up right now too, amen. Amen. I ain't, listen, listen. I can get mine here, and you can upgrade me when I get to heaven. You know, I was flying to Virginia. I was flying to Virginia. True story, I was flying to Virginia. And so, uh, you know, the airports are crazy. So I, I get to Bush, and my phone dings. It's the, it's the airlines. They say, you've been upgraded. I say, oh, these jokers, what they up to? <laughs> and so I get there. I get to the plane. I'm, listen, I'm playing it cool, right? Just because, you know, I'm playing it cool. I see my seat then went. Listen, if, you're, if your seat number goes one, two, three, four, five, you've been upgraded. All right. If your seat starts with two digits, you're not upgraded. Amen. Don't play yourself. So I, I get on there. I look. And, and, and listen, nice plane. And they upgrade my head. Seat number four. They call the people. They say, all those in first class. I look at my deal. I say, now, nah, listen, Lord, don't shame me. Don't shame me. Make sure this is right now. I, I, you know, I said a little prayer. Put a little Holy Spirit on it. Maybe spoke in a tongue. Walked on up there with my little bag. I say, yes, Mr. Lee. And then when you get in first class, here's the deal. When you get in first class, first class is not like all oh, you jokers sitting in the back. <laughs> they don't even let you come to the bathroom in first class. You be moving around. They be like, no, you got to hold that. And first class, before the plane even take off, they be serving you. I was like, oh, my God, this first class stuff is, is something else. Man, listen, I, I got to Virginia. My boy picked me up. You, in first class, you get off the plane first, you know. You ain't got to wait in that long line for that person who's struggling with their bag. They shouldn't have stuffed in the overhead and all that. Right, right, right. My little chest sticking out in first class. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling all good. People ask me what I, what I do. I say, I pastor the Higher Expectations Church in Humble, Texas. Lord, say, I know what to do for him. I know what to do for him. On the trip back, I had a delay. I went from first class all the way to the back. I went from first class all the way to the back. They, I, I went from first class all the way back to the bathroom. You know, you don't want to sit in that seat by the bathroom. I say, Lord, what happened? He says, I needed to humble you because you were thinking more highly than you are to. I say, okay, God, I, I know what to do next time, amen. I know what to do next time. I, I know you put me in first class so I can talk to some of those highfalutin people, but I got, I, got, I got next to myself. I got next to myself. Look what he says. Look what he says. Side break. Look what he says. He says, verse 2. I want to drill in. I want to drill in on this here because this is critical to the church fulfilling its mission together. Listen, we can't do nothing unless we do it together. Amen. Listen, the church is not the mall. It's, it's, listen, this is, this, listen this, this, is not, this is not a collection of consumeristic services. 
Amen. The church is the church is a place where we're where we, we the, listen. The church is like the bad news bears. Listen, we all sinners and we're all supposed to we, we, we all we all get to play even though we even though we ain't at our best. You listen, listen, you play. Listen, in the church, you come and you work wounded. You listen, 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 listen. You serve hurting. You serve you serve when you're on top of the mountain and when you're in the valley. Right. The, the, listen, the church is supposed to be the place. Listen, it's more than we like to call it a hospital. It's more than a hospital. Amen. Amen. Because be, because it's the place where the patients get. Where, listen, where the sick patients get to work with other sick patients. And there's only one doctor. His name is Jesus. Here it is. So Romans 12, 4 through 5, it says, Now we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function. In the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. These verses literally are self-explanatory, right? right? They need little explanation. You and I are not called to be independent, but interdependent. See, independent thinking says, I got this. I don't need y'all. I can handle this by myself. Not just think for a moment. Think for a moment. Because we've all been guilty of this in the season of our life. When was the last time you thought you had that all by yourself? And the enemy was just, the enemy was beating you down. Listen, listen, listen. I love to show up someplace with a whole bunch of other folk. I mean, listen, listen. If you were in, if you were in the French quarters in New Orleans at night, you don't want to walk the French quarters by yourself. You want to crowd. Amen. Because you stand less of a chance of being robbed. But by yourself, you're almost certain to be robbed. You almost certain to be got. And so and so and so and so you were never designed to do life by yourself. In fact, let's just be honest. Come on, y'all. Most of the time, we don't even like our own self. Most of the time, we can't get along with us. That's it. Lord, I got them. They quiet. I got them. I, I I got him. I got him. I got him. Listen, person, don't, don't look at the person next to you. I'm talking about you right now. Most of the time you struggle to get along with your own self. And so and so and so God in his providence says, listen, I know you having a hard time doing life by yourself. So I'm going to give you some family. I'm going to give you. And listen, can I tell you what's the difference between your church family and your natural family? Your church family, you're going to be with forever. If your natural family don't know Jesus, amen, when you breathe the last time, you're done with them jokers. So if you want to see them again, you better start sharing the gospel with them and asking God to soften their heart and open their ears. So, so, so what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying, Pastor? Listen, you may not like Sister Jackie, but you better love her because you're going to be with her for a long time. Mm -hmm. You're going to be seeing her the rest of your life. All the way into eternity. You're going to get to heaven. You're going to be like, Lord, I made it. I made it. And Jackie, come on around the corner. Girl, I've been hanging out here for a whole. Let me, let me, let me give you a tour. Amen. Let me show you my career. Amen. I always tell my wife, I said, baby, don't worry. When you get to heaven, set it all up. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Amen. I'm on my way. See, I would not want the Lord to take me. No, seriously. I know how much she loves me. I would, want, I would not want her to go through that heartache and pain of the Lord taking me before he takes her. Amen? I'm just saying. I, see, when you love somebody, you want the best for them. Let me, listen. The interdependent believer, see, look, the sisters, they all messed up with that. They're going to be in the car talking crazy. You bet not. I, you, listen, they're going to be giving us statistics going home. You know, women outlive men. I don't know where you got that from. It's a scientific fact. They're going to be all on that. No, 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 no. I'm going to be here till I'm 100 in my right mind. Amen. Y'all might have to stand me up, push me against the wall, tie me, tie me to the cross. Amen. But I'm having a walk. I'm going to still be preaching. Amen. It might be a little discombobulated, but y'all going to get it anyway. I'm going to be preaching to some of the children's children. Amen. No. Listen, listen, listen. Let me let, come, come, back, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Listen, listen. The interdependent, the interdependent believer says, I need help. I need you. We're better together. I need help. I need you. We're better together. When Rob and Darrell and Jamir are preaching, it's because, guess what? I need a break. 
I want to go on vacation too. Because when y'all go on vacation, y'all don't tell me. Y'all just don't show up. <laughs> y'all be looking on Facebook to figure out when pastor ain't there. We was at my brother-in-law wedding last night, and my wife went to post it. I said, now, when you post those pictures, tell them jokes we're going to be at church. Because you know about 20 of them ain't coming if they know we in Louisiana. <laughs> pastor ain't there, I ain't going. Like, pastor is God. No, God is here. And so listen, we all need help. Whatever area, if you over an area of ministry, you ought to be actively recruiting others with, with gifts to enhance the ministry. Amen. And, 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 people, and this is what people do all the time. They, 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 they huddle around things. They don't get any help. Then they be talking about how people don't love them, how nobody cares about me, nobody want to serve me. No, that's because you selfish. You won't share the ministry with other folk. And when God has clearly said, amen, it's going to take all of us to do this thing. It's going to take all of us to do this thing. And so, and so look, look, look. God never intended for anyone to do life alone. From the beginning, he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. And I know we always attribute that to, to man physical, but he's talking about mankind. It wasn't good for man to be alone. That's why Jesus in John 17 and 20 pray, pray, prays to pray. He says, I also pray for those who will believe in me through your message, that they will be one. The only way you can be one, he's not talking about marriage. He's talking about the church. And so every team I've ever been on has had what I call healthy tension. Marriages have what I call healthy tension. In fact, I don't want to be with nobody that we can't, that all we do is get along. I need us to have some seasons where we don't see eye to eye. That's how we sharpen each other. I need somebody to tell me, Pastor, you wrong this time. You didn't get that right. I'm human. Amen. I need somebody other than Sister Kim to tell me that. I heard that. I heard that. Amen. So listen. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's my homie. I love her. Right? What do I mean by this? Oneness is not sameness. Catch this, y'all. We're not called to be clones. We're called to complement each other for the common good. We can make simple human observations that every part of the body is different. Look at your hands and look at your feet. They different. And you know they different because some of us wear shoes because we got ugly feet. I had a sister tell me once, I said, listen, we're going to have a surprise feet wash. She said, Pastor, don't do that. Don't do that, Pastor. She said, I got to get this hair cut off my toes first. I said, all right, sis. I wanna, she said, I'm not, I'm not pulling my, shoe, my feet out. No surprise foot washing. Because if I broke out right now and say, listen, we finna have surprise feet wash. Some of y'all are getting up going out the side door. Y'all like, no, nah, Pastor, you don't want to see these dogs, right? But listen, if you look at, when you go home, look at your hand, look at your feet, you'll see a difference, right? The body of Christ is the same way. It's a difference, but they both are needed. It makes life easier. And so, and, and, and so, and so God has set it up that way. Simple observations, right? Your eyes are different than your nose. Your tongue is different than your, te your teeth. Now, 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 check out this tongue and teeth. Not tongue and cheek, tongue and teeth. Your teeth allows food to be chewed, but your tongue allows taste and swallowing of the food. In the same way, we need each other to fulfill our purpose for the glory of God and for the good of others. And so, in other words, listen, I've been pressing in finding your spiritual gifts. And let, and, and let, me, let me preface this this way. There are some gifts in the Bible that are so wide and varied that it looks different on different people. In other words, like the gift of serving, which, which we discovered means to be waiting tables, uh, it, it, it's really just, it just means to serve in various ways. The, 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 so, 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 so you may have a passion to serve children. You may have a passion to serve in hospitality. You may want to be part of the cooking team. You may, you, you, you may want to say, man, we keep growing. I'm, I'm going to run. Serve. It can be a variety of things. It, it, it doesn't hammer them down like we think. And so here's my third point. I'm almost done. I know y'all looking like, shucks, we're going to make movies. Almost done. <laughs> Amen. Here, here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We contribute in different ways using different gifts. We contribute in different ways using different gifts. It's like your family reunion. Everybody brings something. I know some of y'all got some, some, don't, listen, don't think about your auntie who can't cook. 
But listen, but everybody brings something. That's, that's, that's how the body can. In fact, the Bible says one brings a hymn, one brings a word, one brings a tongue, but we're all supposed to bring something, amen. In other words, here's what I love about God. When God saved you and the Holy Spirit uh, 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 came and entered into your being and, and breathed the breath of salvation and life into you, God gave you gifts. And here was the deal. Every time you show up, your gifts show up with you. <clears throat> Unlike when you come to pastor's house for dinner, you don't come to church empty handed. You bring something. Now, there's nothing wrong, amen. With, with, with coming to church, amen, and leaving with something too. Mm -hmm. Like if you come to our house for dinner, for, 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 for whatever we're doing, we're going to give you food to go. Because listen, we always have more than what we need. Listen, just like here at church, whenever we have, we, out, out on the patio, we do, we do Saturday uh, fellowship, and it's always more food than what we need. Because we, cause we don't want you to come, amen, then say, man, all I got was one chicken and two french fries. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. We had to split the sodas in threes. They had them little bitty cups today. Church must be broke. Amen. Pastor made us all stand in the lobby. The AC must not work in the sanctuary. Y'all know how y'all be. Y'all know how y'all be. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. I, I can do this here because this is my friend. I can do this. So we, have a old, we had an old van, 1997. Bessie Rando. Proudly. Now, we finna have Say Yes uh, summer camp. Say Yes summer camp, right? Listen, with the old van, they was all complaining. It's an old van. We just gonna drive our cars, blah, 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 blah. All this. Earth. We bought a new van. Everybody want a key now. <laughs> Everybody want a key. It got radio in it and satellite in it. They're like, I'm driving, I'm driving. They, see, but nobody wants to drive Bessie. Bessie, Bessie like that, Bessie like that, 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 I'm just a bill. Remember that cartoon, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill? Yeah, that's how Bessie, nobody paying attention to her. I may become law, I don't know. See? Amen. She drove good. Listen, sure. Listen, faithful. There's something to be said for faithfulness. Something to be said for faithfulness. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, here it is, here it is, here it is. Because this, this, this is where we got to tune in at. Because, listen, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen, listen carefully. We come from so many faith traditions here. Some of us was Catholic. Some of us was Methodist. Some of us come out of Word of Faith. Some of us Pentecostal. So we've had a variety of experiences. Now, here's what we believe concerning the gifts. We believe that the gifts do exist, but according to the Word of God. So, 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 so we want you to have experience, but we don't want your experience to be contrary to the Word of God. Amen. We want your experiences to be decent and in order. We don't want to we don't want to shut down your experiences. Amen. But we don't want you to be crazy. Amen. We don't want you to be scaring folk. It's like when I first got saved. Well, I wasn't saved. I was going to church. But when Sister Dale first got saved and I went to church with her, let me let me let me let me make the statement right, because she was saved. When Sister Dale got saved, she was for real saved. Amen. She was she was a child of God. When I got saved, I was I was a work in progress. I was I, you know, I came to church. I was working on it. It, it took some time for me to, to get this Christian. And here's why. We went to a Pentecostal church. And they would break out running and speaking in tongues. And one Sunday, this lady came to church and she fell on the floor and she started slithering through the seats. I said, oh, no. And I had a brother with me, Andre Joseph. I'll never forget. This is my first experience. He about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, he was like, you get her. I was like, no, you get her. I ain't fooling with that lady. Ain't nobody supposed to be doing all that. Man, I ain't come to church for this. Huh? What's wrong with this hurt? Man, uh-uh, no. Uh-uh. I, listen, I had made up in my mind, I ain't never coming back to this church. Because they got crazy stuff going on here. And then, listen, then, all, then the pastor told the people, pray, uh, start praying. And then everybody started praying. And I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God, no, no, no. Not only do we got the lady whirling around through the floor under the seats, the whole church is speaking in languages that I don't understand. And that's one thing about me, amen. I need to know what folks saying around me. When we go, when we go on mission trips, I always take somebody who can translate, and I keep them close to me. Because I want to know if, they, if, if things going down, I need to just whisper to me. You ain't got to tell everybody else. 
right? Because I already told the team, when you see pastor get up and move, <laughs> there ain't the time to be talking about, mm, this is so good. No, 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 no. When you see me moving out the door, you need to be getting up, bring your plate with you, but, but we, we rolling on. And so, and so, and so I, I bring that up because here's why. We've had a variety of faith traditions, and here's where the church falls out at when it comes to gifts. Because we say, some of us say, well, I don't see it like that. This is, not a, this, this, is, this is an open-handed issue. This is not an issue of whether or not your salvation is at stake. And for other people in other faith traditions, we shouldn't break ties with them because we don't see it the same way. We are, we are, we are, by, we, we are by design a complementarian church, right? There are certain things we believe. We believe in elders. We believe they ought to be males. We, 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 we believe pastors ought to, ought, ought, ought to be men who lead the church. I got some friends who are egalitarian church. That means them and their wife. Co- but we're not going to break fellowship over that. Amen. Your wife can come to the women's retreat and speak. She just can't come speak to us at church. Right? We good with that. We, we, we all right. We're not saying you're not called. We're not saying you're not giving. If y'all want to run around, y'all, y'all have on mass tongue speaking in y'all church, okay. Look strange. Don't line up with the word. I'm probably going to get up and leave, but it's okay. We're not going to break fellowship. That When we sit down, have some tea, I'm going to get back in the scriptures with you and say, now I was at your church, and the whole church was speaking in tongues, and Paul says, you see, but we ain't got to fall out. We ain't got to fight over stuff, right? If you've been filled with the Holy Spirit with a mighty burning fire, and you speak in tongues, good for you, but don't condemn the rest of us if we don't. Amen. So Paul, if you notice, in 1 Corinthians 12 and in Romans 12, Paul is literally having the same conversation. It is thought that Paul is writing to both churches almost simultaneously. And when he comes to, 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 to the gifts, particularly these seven gifts, he began to lay out some things to us about the gifts, right? And as you study scriptures, you'll kind of see some normative practices that we ought to apply. Now, let me say this here. Gifts don't make us great. They just makes us more useful for God, right? They don't make us great. They just make us more useful for God. Me and a guy, we've known each other for a long time. Somewhere along the line, he became an apostle. Okay, that's you, bro. But I said, I'm not going to call you apostle. Because the Bible says that there are, the foundations have already been established. Now, you might be an apostle in the sense that, you, that you, are, you, you, you are sent out one, but that wasn't what he was talking about. He was talking about he was an apostle just like the apostle Paul. So I say, I think you look crazy. I love you. But, 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 but I'm not finna. And, and, and then he told me, I'm an apostle. I'm over the bishops. I'm over the pastors. I said, oh, okay. Okay. So, and, and then he told me he was a chief apostle. I said, okay. So now we got levels to this thing. But here was the deal. Listen, you go ahead on and do that over there. I'm going to go back over here where we have some normative practices based on Scripture. All right? So here it is. Look at your Bibles. Verse 6. Let me, let me give you the point again. We contribute in different ways with different gifts. Now, here it is. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to one's proportion of faith. So then we have to ask ourselves these questions. If service, use it according to service. If teaching, teaching, exhortation, exhorting, exhortation, uh, generos- giving and ge- with generosity, leading with diligence. And so, so let us start off by saying that, that, that our gifts in no way secure our salvation, but they are a bonus that God has given each of us. We are, we are growing in our walk with God and the implementation of our gifts here at the church. All right? We're growing into this thing. All right? If the Bible says we're supposed to have it, I believe that somebody is supposed to have it. Nobody has all the gifts, right? And, 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 and they may look different. But, but here it is. Here it is. Let me, let me do my best to help us. Prophecy. Prophecy is the ability to receive and proclaim a message from God. Now, prophecy has generally two things happening with it. One is what they call forthtelling, which, which was simply defined as speaking forth out of God's word to those, right, whom God desired to hear. And, and then the other one is foretelling. It is revealing God's will for the future of what may happen. Now, when we think about prophecy here, we're not thinking about Old Testament prophecy where uh, Elijah or, or Samuel showed up and said, thus said the Lord. 
right? right. I'm, I'm certain they didn't say, thus said the Lord, but since they were speaking in Hebrew, but, but that's my point, right? And so we're thinking about prophecy. And, uh, 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 and, uh, when we think about prophecy, we think about things like a word of knowledge, words of wisdom, encouragement, right? We think about, we, we think so, so somebody walk up to you, amen, and they say something to you that only you and God can know, amen, and, 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 they, and they're there to encourage you. Here's what I always tell believers. Here's what I tell believers. Here's what I tell believers. If you are a born-again believer, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you are because you accepted God, you really don't need somebody to come and tell you something that God said that you don't already know because you already got the same Holy Spirit that they have. And you have the whole word of God. So when folk roll up on me and say, I got a word for you, I say, I got a whole bunch of words for you. Let's get started. <laughs> I do. I just grab my Bible. You got a word for me? I got some words for you too. Hmm? My first word is crazy. <laughs> Let me help you out. Okay, so, 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 so when the Bible talks about prophecy, we lean, we lean here, right, on, 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 on the idea of foretelling, meaning uh, 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 the proclamation of the gospel and the proclamation of good things that God has already said in his word, amen, spoken to God's people, right? And so, and so, and then he talks about service, which we covered, but I'll cover it again briefly. He says, if service and serving, serving is to provide practical help to meet the needs of others. And, 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 and oftentimes you'll have this gift coupled with another gift, meaning that, 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 that you want to serve people. Anyway, some people just have the gift of service, and some of us, we don't. Let's just be honest. Some of us have the gift where we want to serve people, and some of us, amen, listen, we just don't have that. Don't mean you're a bad person. I mean, we just need to keep praying for you. That's all. Service has a wide array of uses in the body of Christ, everything from cooking and cleaning to sewing and singing. It's usually someone behind the scenes getting things done, and they do it. Here's how you know if you got the gift of serving. Listen carefully. Come on, come on, come on. You serve without complaining. You serve joyfully. You serve so much, we got to sit you down to keep from burning you out. But if you think you got the gift of serving and you're like, oh, Lord, I got to go to church and ah, Jesus. No, 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 no. You ain't got the gift of serving, right? 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 You got the gift of, you got the gift of getting on our nerve. All right? Now, teaching. Let me go to the next one. These, I just want to unpack them because I've gotten a lot of questions. And so teaching, he who teaches, teaching is to understand and communicate God's word in a clear and relevant manner. Some of us are called to teach. Not everybody's called to teach behind the pulpit or the podium, right, to be a pastor. Some of us teach one-on-one. Some of us teach community groups. Some of us teach in our homes. Some of us uh, lead discipleship groups. Some of us teach mission, missional groups. Some of us just got the gift. Like Dr. Ta- Dr. Tatman has the gift of teaching. Dr. Tabman don't need a, he don't, like me, I got to study hard to come preach to y'all. Doc just opens up the book, and he read it. Okay, this is what I'm teaching today. It's just in him, right? I, I, don't, have the, I, I, don't, I don't have the gift like that. So it's the gift of teaching, and some of you have the gift of teaching. And listen, you may have to first discover it in HEC Kids. Then you might, you might graduate on up, but, 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 but you enjoy sitting down with the word of God, unpacking it for other people. That's the gift of teaching. Some of you have the gift of exhortation. Exhortation, uh, exhortation is to encourage and comfort and instruct others. If you have that gift, you're always building people up. You're always, l- listen, listen, listen. When you see the glass, it's always half full. You always see people coming out. You, listen, listen, listen. You're cheering for the slow kid. In the track on the track meet. We all know he not winning. But you got a bullhorn calling out his name. Go, Johnny, go, Johnny, you can do it. We know Johnny coming in last place. Because he done came in last place in every race all year. Only way he winning, people, everybody got a trip, break their legs, and all that. And he may still may not win. But 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 if you got to give for exhortation, you are encouraging him. You got to give here's the, here's how you know you got to give for exhortation. Some people can't cook. But you taste the food, you go, you go, it was okay. Uh-huh. You, just a little bit more seasoning, a little dab of this, a little mustache there. Girl, you getting this here. The rest of us taste it. When you leave the room, we like. <laughs> amen. Oh, you know I throw your food away if it ain't good. I'm just going to be honest with you, amen. I'm going to throw your food away. 
I mean, listen, and the next time you say, Pastor, you want some of that? No, no, no. Sister Lee wants some of that. I don't want none of that. <laughs> Amen. You ride on by Popeye's and get my chicken. Amen. All right? But, 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 but people with that, extra, that gift, see, that, 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 that word, that word, that word, that word, that word for exhortation is paracleto. And that's where we get the word. It means to come alongside people, right? You're, you're always coming alongside people. Man, it, it don't, you don't even got to know people. You can sit on a plane next to a person, they crying, and when they get off, they just so happy. Amen. You're the happy pill in the room. You just make everybody feel, feel, feel great. That's the, that's the giver. Then some of us have the gift of giving. The gift of giving. Now, I know y'all heard that, and y'all start thinking, it's not just money. People with the gift of giving give away everything. Money, time, right, talent. They just, they just love to give. Amen. And let me tell you this here. They give cheerfully and quietly. I got a good friend. Good friend. He, and he's helped our church in the season when we were struggling. And uh, we went out to eat. And I said, man, well, I got it. I'm, I'm going to pay for it. Now, listen, this is a good friend. And my friend said to me, he says, no, nah, you can't pay for it. I said, why can't I pay for it? He says, because I have the gift of generosity. Right? Then he wrote us a significant check. He wrote us a significant check. Right? And he says, listen, I can't sing. I can't preach. I can't dance. He says, listen. I have a hard time keeping my mind focused in prayer. He says, but this is the one thing I can do. He says, I can write checks. He says, and if it makes sense, Brian, I'll write the check. He has the gift of generosity. Right? right? And he will come serve. And he'll serve, and y'all will never know y'all standing to one of the richest people in America. He has that gift. He, listen, ain't braggadocious. He, 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 he. See, see, people with that gift, they just love to give. They love to give. They got two cars, you need one, they just, here you go. Right? They just love to give. It's the gift of generosity. And some of y'all have that gift. And now, now people who don't understand that gift, they say, oh, they always showing off. I always showing off. That's the gift of haters. Oh, that ain't in the scriptures. That ain't in the scriptures. I'm sorry. Hater ain't in the scripture. Hater ain't in the scripture. Right, 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 right. Of the devil, that's what we'll call it, of the devil. Then there's the gift of leading. He talks about the gift of leading. Leading is the ability, catch this, y'all, to create unity. When, when we lead, it's, it's, it's somebody who makes good and clear decisions, direction. The, the, uh, you sometimes see it with elders and shepherds and pastors, right? And, and, and so it, 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 is the, it is the gift to get people focused in the right direction. And you listen, you don't need a title. You don't need a title to be a leader. If we got to give you a title to get you to lead, we probably don't need you to be leading. It's like the kid who say, I'm not going out and he on the basketball team. I ain't playing because I ain't the captain. No problem. Go and sit up there in the stands with your parents. I, listen, listen, you, you, you know who the best leaders are on the team? It's that guy sitting way down at the back of the bench that the coach then forgot his name. But listen, he, be out, he just be cheering folk on. They come, he giving out people water. You got a cramp, he working it out. He talking to you. And then he telling you, now, next time, curl around to them. That's the gift of leadership. We always think leader in the corporate term that we got to sit at the head of the table. Often servant leaders, amen, go unnoticed. Then lastly, he talked about the gift of mercy. Many of you who have taken the spiritual gift survey, uh, uh, the gift of mercy showed up. It's supernatural compassion for other people. Now, I've told y'all, and I'm just honest, I struggle with this. I la Listen, I pray for compassion. I'm saved. Y'all looking at me crazy, right? But, but, but this, this is not a strong suit for me because I grew up with a dad that says you got to work hard for everything you get. And I can't figure out if you can stand. It was 103 degrees yesterday, 107 for most humans. If you can stand outside holding a sign for eight hours, you can go get a job. So when I pull up on you, amen, with my, with, with my ice cold smoothie looking at you, with my window up, it's because I lack mercy. Because <laughs> if I had mercy, I would say, hey, let me go on over here and help this brother. But, I'm, but, I'm, but, but, but listen, but I'm, but I'm asking God to help me with mercy and compassion. See, 
At least y'all got an honest preacher. Amen. All right. And so and so and so mercy. You see this here with people. They want to feed the poor. Right. I got folk. I have to tell them you can't go there by yourself. Right? I ain't saying no names. <laughs> Amen. Shucks. But Sister Karen, you, st- you come up missing. We ain't going to know where you at. <laughs> Shucks. We put a track on you. Make sure they got, what's that deal? Family 360. <laughs> Shucks. But, but people with the gift of mercy, they don't see danger in anything. They don't. They don't. I, know some, I, know some, I know some people now, they're in the Ukraine serving. Bomb, listen, they, listen, they live, I say, let me, they left their comfortable homes with AC, watching the war like me and you on CNN. And they say, no, no, we got to go. We got to go. We even took up an offering earlier. To, to help send them. They got the gift of mercy. Amen. They say, and if we die, we die. Oh, wow. I say, oh, my God. Man, y'all so blessed. I'm going to be praying for you. Now, 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 I do have the gift of prayer. You got the gift of I can pray for you now. <laughs> Amen. I can get, listen, listen. I will lay out on this dirty carpet for you, man, pray and call heaven down like a good Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> listen, I'm a, look, the blood of Jesus all over you. But, but some people have that gift of mercy. Listen, the Bible is not exhaustive in all the gifts, but he does give us about 22. And somewhere in those 22, we got the word of God. But, there, but, 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 but scholars believe that there are other gifts that Paul just did not list in the scriptures. You say, Pastor, why, why, why do you bring that all up? Here, here, here's why I bring that all up. Amen. Here's why. Amen. Here, here, here's the conclusion that, that, that I'm trying to get us to. And, and this is it. Right? <clears throat> there are many gifts to be used in many different ways for one purpose, glorifying God and you reaching your full redemptive purpose. All I'm asking you to do is, is, is earnestly pursue whatever it is God has put in you for the glory of God. In other words, don't be in church your whole life consuming and never blooming and giving. We can't do all that God called us to do unless we all begin to serve in some shape, form, or fashion. And that may look different. And, and, here, and here, 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 I'm going to end here. And I believe uh, a few years ago, I met with the elders, and I said, we're no longer, uh, no longer going to be the, the uh, seller of ministry goods and services. Uh, here's what we mean. We say, whatever ministries we do is going to have to come from the pews. We're going to trust that God has birthed something in those who sit in the pews. And then it's our job as elders and leaders to figure out how to, how to finance that and get function and flow behind it as long as it lines up with the word of God. Amen? And so, and so, and so we want you to discover your gifts and use them for your full redemptive potential. So here's what I want to do. Amen. Ask Dr. Tappan to come pray for us. Amen. And while Doc is praying, and he's going to close us out, I'm going to ask that you just open your heart and just say, Lord, what, what have you put in me that I may just be sitting on that can be a blessing to somebody else? Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this church, for our pastor. Um, I thank you, Lord, that he, he talks about the word of God being our foundation, Lord. Um, Jesus Christ being our cornerstone. Fellowship with other believers being so important. And spiritual gifts being for the benefit of the body of Christ, Lord. We thank you for these things. We thank you for you, God, sending your son, Jesus Christ, to um, die for our sins on Calvary. But Lord, about 2,000 years Years ago, but Lord, it just wasn't an event that happened 2,000 years ago. It was the event, Lord, that you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all planned together from eternity past to bring redemption, to bring salvation to the human race. And so we thank you, Lord, that you've done all these things to orchestrate not only our salvation, but to orchestrate our sanctification, Lord. We thank you that you were concerned about bringing us into the family, but you're also concerned about how we behave once we're in the family. And so we thank you, Lord, that we have the Bible. We thank you that we have a 
great pastor. We thank you. We have a, a great church, a great um, body of believers here, um, brothers and sisters in Christ that have all committed to serve together and to love together, Lord. And so we thank you for these things. We thank you for all the gifts, all the different things you've given to us in our lives, Lord. Um, we just don't take them for granted, but right now we say um, what it says in the Bible that in the book of James that every good and perfect gift comes from above from the father of lights Lord we thank you that all these gifts we know all these good things that we've received Lord from salvation and everything else all come from you in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen